it should be it should work okay do you see my screen yeah yeah okay yeah so hello everybody uh my name is Dima. I work at SoftServe for almost 13 years for now. I'm a web developer. So, and today I'm going to cover uh, the game development a little bit. So we'll cover one uh, genre. This is a platformer games. So for now, you see the first slide, you, you see the link. You may use this link on your computer right now just to, uh, just to play a little bit, just to know uh, what I'm talking about. So for today, we are trying to create, uh, like go step by step through the process of creating of simple game uh, without any engines, uh, dependencies, libraries, and so on. Just uh, like our fingers and JavaScript inside the browser. So this is it. I think everyone uh, remembers the Super Mario game, right? So this is a very popular platformer in 19th. Uh, and we will speak uh, about very similar game, which I created uh, this year. And yeah, so uh, let's start. So this is a logotype of the game. It was generated uh, using the AI. Uh, so, um, it's version 0 0.1 for now. It works in browser. So yeah, so let's let's do some demo first, just to I don't know. I, I wish it like would be in normal FPS uh, on your side because it depends on internet. Yeah, so it should allow it a little bit. Yeah, so it's it's fully implemented in browser. Um, so guys, uh, can you listen, can, can you hear the sounds? Can you see the picture? Is it okay? No, we can't hear. Yeah. 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 Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, this is the first, uh, room of the game. So it's split it into the rooms. So you have a main character, you may jump, you may, uh, you, you have like different mechanics here. So you may run, uh, you, you may climb on walls. Uh, you have different like, uh, for example, small lakes, enemies and so on. You may uh, grab uh, different items here. So yeah. I don't want to like play a lot. So I, I think you will like get the concept of the game. So it's very simple. Uh, yeah, let's let's try to get some items. Yeah, so we, we get a heart. Yeah. So th this is a cave actually. So you are in the cave and your goal is to find the key and find the door and uh, use, using this key, you just open the door com and complete the level. So it's very simple. So you got the idea. So, and today I'm going to show you how to create such game uh, in JavaScript, like step by step. So let's, let, let's continue. And, and also one like um, uh, important things, if, if you have like a question during the presentation, so don't wait till the end, just interrupt me and ask your question. So it's, it's okay. It's okay, I'm asking you about this. So uh, I was inspired by a few games. Uh, so all these three are modern games. So Boba Robot, Celeste and Spelunky. They are platformers, but they were created in, um, I think last maybe 10 years, seven years. So they are not from 19th and they all uh, like, in pixel art, as you may see, they use the modern resolutions, the GPUs and, and so on and so on. But but for me, it was like inspiration. I don't know if you know these games. Uh, they are popular in uh, for people who love pixel art. And we will speak about pixel art today also because this game is also in a pixel art. Um, so I also use Mid Journey. So Mid Journey, uh, just generated uh, for me a lot of images, for example, backgrounds. 
So this is an example of string which I use here uh, to generate the backgrounds for the game. So every room uh, in the game uh, is used such background like here. So they are different depending on the depth of the cave, but, but in general, this is just like general information for you. Okay, so what was implemented? So we have some features in the game. So first of all, it works in different uh, configurations. So if you have a modern computer with a fast uh, CPU and GPU, um, it will work on 120 FPS, for example, or if you have a like old computer, so it will work on 30 FPS. So um, the heart of the game is implemented in such way that um, it should work on different configurations. So I will talk about this a little bit later. Uh, so this is a speed run. So we have a timer in the game. So it's important to go through the game as fast as you can. So it's room based, I already showed it. Uh, also after safe and auto load implemented. So if you die, for example, you will continue from the same spot in the game, or you may just reload the page. This is a standard HTML page. So in this case, auto load will also like uh, continue the game from the same spot. So I already told about the mid journey. So uh, yeah, mechanics. So the run, jump, idle, fall, these all are mechanics in the game. I will uh, explain every mechanic a little bit later, how it works. Um, we may collect items. For example, we have a lot of different things we may get. So for example, mushrooms, gun, bullets, uh, hearts, and then so on and so on. The text messages also were implemented in the game. So we may show some messages to the user, to the player. Uh, I completed one level, uh, just uh, like example. I will tell you about the title. This is a editor for the levels. It's, it's open source and it's very popular. Uh, we have a navigation menu, settings, uh, game value, different effect scripts, um, effects and scripts. These two are um, the techniques, how we may add different things into the game. And I will also cover this too. We have enemies, music and sounds. We have an ability to redesign everything. Uh, I also cover this item and the simple type of animation, frame animation was implemented. I, I also have a like um, um, separate pages with explanation of this. So how it was uh, implemented. So first of all, I use JavaScript, not TypeScript, not any other language. So this is a pure JavaScript. I didn't use object-oriented programming. Uh, if you have an experience with React and with functional programming, so you know that uh, the code may be organized through the functions and modules. So this is how I implemented this one. So I don't have any dependencies at all. So no jQuery, no any engines, libraries, anything. So I use only the native BOOM, uh, DOM, and a little bit of CSS and one HTML file. I also use the Webpack because I need some modules. Uh, so this is it. So only JavaScript and Webpack. So which entity entries do we have um, in the project? We have a modules or files. Inside these modules, we have like few functions. Uh, we have two types of functions. Uh, one is a constructor function and another one just simple function. So this is it. The constructor function will return some data. So we have a data also, and we have one observer. I didn't use any libraries for observer. I just used the window object because it supports a observable pattern from scratch. Uh, yeah, on the right side, you may see the simple example of the structure. It's also very simple, as simple as possible. So it's just linear. So all these files are modules. And yeah, and we also have the PNGs and MP3s for images and uh, music. Yeah, and all the sounds. So let's go one by one. So first of all, uh, here is an example of one module. So the module is just a, just a file with JS extension. Uh, so let's imagine we have model with some name. I don't know, for example, Mary. 
Mary is the name of the main character, right? So the only rule we have, the name of constructor function should be the same. So it should be called Mary from uh, the uppercase. And the constructor function should return some data which is related to uh, this model. So for example, if it's Mary, it should return the instance of Mary. Uh, if it's enemy, it should return the instance of enemy and so on and so on. If this model is like drawing something, so for example, we have a Mary, it's an image, we should, we should draw the image in, into the canvas. So in this case, it will have like draw and update functions. I will cover this too a little bit later, but in general, they just draw uh, your character or your something uh, to the canvas. And we also have kill. Kill is a destructor function, so we don't have destructors in JavaScript, so I just simulate. Uh, this. Uh, yeah, so let, let's create some, let, let's start from something. So first of all, you need to create the index HTML file. It's very simple. So all we need here is a canvas. So we set some ID into the canvas and that's it. Very simple. Okay, let's go further. We need to create something like index.js. So index.js is the first file in our project and we may set up a little bit our game. So what do we need? We, we need to find our canvas in a HTML. We need to get to the context. What is the context? Context is the API for the canvas. Uh, through this API, we may draw, <clears throat> draw lines, circles, uh, squares, uh, draw images, and so on and so on. So we have a lot of different functions to uh, draw things on the canvas. So we set the width and height of our canvas. And uh, don't forget that modern monitors has like high resolution. So for example, I have a 4K resolution. So, but use only 1024. Um, so I, I just increase the size of the pixel. So the last line uh, do that. So I just get this resolution and zoom it uh, to the modern monitor. And this is how we get this pixelated effect. So this line image smoothing enabled, it, it means that we just turn off the anti-aliasing effect. So let's go further. So what do we have? We have many uh, great things uh, embedded into the browser. So we have image. Image is a part of the BOM browser object model. So it's embedded class and we may use it just to draw images. So because we have, a, we use the client server application, we need to load this image. So in JavaScript, we need just to create the instance of this class, uh, set the callback. This callback will be called when we complete the downloading, downloading of the image. And we have a source uh, property. So here should be the URL. I just simplify it to Mary PNG, but here should be HTTP like standard URL. So when it uh, will be loaded, the onload function will be called it. And inside the onload or after that, we may call the draw image function. So by the way, the CTX here, this is the API, which I mentioned before. Um, I mean, this one. Yeah. So through this API, we may, for example, draw the image. So here, some details, how can we do that? So you don't need to understand it right now. But in general, you get this image, get this part of this image, and put it on these coordinates with this width and height uh, in a canvas. So this is it. Um, yeah, so let's go further. So we have very similar uh, object for the audio. Uh, so it's also inside the BOM, you just need to create the instance, uh, set the callback and set the URL. So after that, uh, you may call play, for example, to play the sound. So this is how we may uh, use the sounds in our game. So let's go um, to the next item. So this is, a, um, yeah, this is a very fundamental thing. So if you want to change some pixels on your canvas, just concrete pixels, all pixels or few of them. So you may use two functions. So get image data just returns a rectangle, uh, for example, entire canvas or one pixel. Uh, uh, it returns uh, the data uh, as an array 
of RGBY. So for the every pixel, we have a four bytes. So you may change the color using the RGB bytes, or you may change the brightness. Oh, it's not the brightness, it's the transparency. Yeah, right. And another function is put image data. So when you change your data, you may put this data back to the canvas. And this is how you may create like any effects. I will use these two functions many, many, many times uh, in a game for the effects. So how in general it works. So let's imagine we have like a lot of different uh, objects on screen. So we have main character, we have background, we have enemies, we have different effects and so on and so on. So all of them should be drawn uh, on the canvas. And we also have something like FPS. So it's frame per second. So every period of time we draw the frame. So on this frame, we have all these backgrounds. Uh, so for example, here you may see uh, three examples of objects. So we have a level, it's a background. We have a main hero, it's a Mary main character of the game. We have a gun with Mary and so on and so on. So all these uh, objects should be drawn on every frame. And for example, here we have a 60 FPS. So it means then per one second, we draw 60 frames. And on every frame, we should draw uh, all these objects. Um, so this is how it works. So for every object, we have two functions, draw and update. So for example, we have a draw and update for level, for hero and for gun. So we just call them one by one. So we call draw functions function for every object first. And after that, we call update function for every object uh, in the second place. And do the some pause delay. And after that, after 16 and six milliseconds, we do the same. So this is it. This is a general idea of animation, animation uh, loop. So this is a, an, an implementation of this animation loop. So we have a function animate. Inside of it, we have a draw and update. Uh, Next slide will cover the draw and update in details. The last one is a request animation frame. I don't know if you know about this function. This function just registers the next frame. So it means that it, uh, the animate function will be called in future after some delay. The delay depends on uh, the FPS. Uh, it, it actually depends on your graphic card. So. Uh, in few milliseconds in future, you we will be call it again and again. So this is something like infinite loop, uh, main loop for any game. Okay, so uh, next item. So you remember about all the objects in a game. So for example, we have a level, we have a hero, we have a bullet, we have picket items and so on and so on. So every this object have like draw function, update function, and the instance itself. So we just need to like understand that somewhere in the code, especially in shared objects, we have a list of all these objects for every room. So let, let's just memorize this. So, and it works very simple. So inside the draw function, so you remember about this draw and update function, yeah, inside the anim animation loop. So draw inside, just go through all these objects and call draw, fun draw functions, and this is it. And the same for an update. So this function means that draw all the objects which you have and update all the objects which you have. So this is it. So this is the main idea how the core of the game should work. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, just interrupt me. Don't, uh, don't, leave, uh, don't wait till the end, okay? Yeah. So, yeah. So let's uh, let's cover how we can draw one frame. So let's imagine we are drawing the frame. First of all, we need to clear the canvas. So just clear, clean without anything. So first, uh, you may imagine like Photoshop and the layers inside the Photoshop. So we draw layer by layer and the priority of the layer, it's important. So by the way, uh, go back to this list of objects. We draw them from top to the bottom. So the position of object in this array is important. So this is why we draw the level first. So this is uh, like example how it works. So the first we draw the background. 
it's okay. Okay, after that, we draw the main character. It's a Mary. Uh, we draw some effects. So in this case, let, let me go back. Yeah, so you may see this yellow dots. Um, we draw the bullets here. We draw hertz, uh, add timer and FPS. Uh, we have a picket items, for example, it's a gun for now. Uh, we draw enemies here and here. We draw different scripts. So they are like stalactites, uh, lake, and some plants here and here and here. Yeah. And this is how one frame uh, draws. So we just do that every 60 and 6 milliseconds if you have a, a 60 FPS in your game. Yeah. Uh, so let, let's go. Uh, let's speak about animation. So I implemented very simple animation um, approach. So let's imagine we are talking about the walk animation, yeah? And we are pressing the right button and we need to go right uh, on a screen. So we have a file, it's called walk right 6 PNG. So we need to use PNG because we need to have a, like transparent background. So we need to have only Mary here. As you may see, the six means six frames frames inside. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six frames. So it works very similar to like video uh, on all, uh, like old fashioned uh, style videos when we have uh, 25 frames per second. Uh, this is the same approach. So we draw the frame, um, after some delay, we draw the second flame, frame. After some delay, we draw the third flame, frame and so on. And we just loop this process. So after the last frame, we go to the first one. So this is it. And this is how the uh, walking work and jumping work and like any fire uh, and actually any animation in a game works in this way. Um, yeah. So this is an like object which describes uh, one animation, one like object with all the different animations it has. So for example, this is a, a main character. So we have a position uh, where the character is on a screen. We have like different types of animation. We may go left, go right, jump, uh, for example, fire and so on. So here we have a, a URL of the image, here is the amount of frames inside the image, and this is a delay in the milliseconds be between the frames. Uh, yeah, so this is something like configuration for the main character. You may use such configuration for enemies, for effects, for different things in the game. And it's, it's not something like standard, so you may use like your variant of configuration, so it's okay. So this is like my variant. Yeah, so next item is uh, Tilet. Tilet is an open source um, editor. Uh, in, in simple words, this is just simple Photoshop. Yeah, so as a result of this application will be just the image. So it will be the PNG file. You may see the layers here on the right. You may see the uh, small images. Uh, we call them sprites. And I don't know if you see guys, but this image is split into the squares, small squares. The size of one square is uh, 32 pixels on 32 pixels. So we may change the sprite size, but for this game, I used uh, this size. And when you're creating the level, you just pick a uh, right sprite and put it like a puzzle. So you, you may create, you may uh, like create your own uh, sprite sets. You may download from internet. So if you may draw, it's okay to create yours original like style. Yeah, so the result of this uh, application will be just PNG file. So I will show you how it works. So this is an entire level. It's split it into the rooms. So let me show you um, how it looks like rooms. So we started the game from this first room. And this is our like labyrinth. And um, as you may see, this is just an image actually. And also uh, in our level, we use something like blocks. 
so these uh, white things on on a screen you may understand them like walls so the main character it's impossible to go through the wall right so you may jump on this uh, wall or block or, or platform uh, but it's impossible to go through them uh, why it's important uh, using these uh, walls or blocks we may implement the intersection so let me explain a little bit so tilet um, export the JSON uh, with the, with a big array inside. So let, let's go back a little bit. So this is a two-dimensional image, right? And let's imagine we need to, uh, as you remember, uh, we have like small sprites inside. So let me let me show it here. Yeah. So I mean the squares. Uh, this is like a puzzle. So it just separated by small squares. And let's imagine the first square has a coordinate zero, zero, the second one is zero, one, and so on and so on. So we may just uh, get this linear array um, and like change it to the two dimensional array. So actually uh, Tilet export one dimensional array which represents all these walls. Yeah. and uh, the one thing we may uh, do, we may compress this array because uh, actually these numbers uh, 435, for example, or zero means that, for example, zero, so the first top left um, element, it's uh, some kind of block there. So actually this number means the uh, unique identifier of the block. So every time for us, it's just, we need just to know, do we have a wall at this concrete point or not? So we may change this array uh, converted to the big ends. So every time when we have a number here, we put it, uh, the, we put the one here. And every time when we have a zero, zero means that we have nothing in, in this point, uh, we, we keep zero. So we will have like the array of ones and zeros and we may convert them to the begins as you remember begins in JavaScript means uh, 64 bits numbers. So this is how we decrease the size of this array into uh, like 64 times. It will be 64 times less. So, uh, why do we need this array? So let's imagine uh, we have a, we need to know uh, when, so for example, let's imagine our character somewhere here and we're starting to fall down, right? We need to know when we need to stop when the platform starts. So yeah, we have four functions uh, on the top, left, right, and down where we may uh, check if like image of our character intersect the image of our wall. So you remember that we have the array of all the walls and inside these functions, oh yeah, I, I just show it the uh, special places where we may check. So for example, this concrete dot has X and Y coordinates and this concrete dot also has, and the block also has X and Y coordinates. So we need just to uh, compare if, for example, Y coordinate is greater than Y coordinate of the block. So this is it. Uh, so every such function inside, just go to the block array and just converts X and Y into the offset and check do we have a one inside of it or zero? If one, it means that our picture intersects the wall. So this is it. And we need to move back. So we need to stop here. So this is where a general explanation how it works inside. Uh, so we just use this for a function. So for example, if we fall down, we check only downside. If we jump up, we check top uh, top side. If we go right, we check right and, and so on and so on. So you got the idea. Um, let me explain how, yeah. I'm sorry, I have a question regarding mm -hmm. to previous uh, yeah. image. Yeah. I mean, uh, this uh, tile or how it's named. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I found this picture in the browser network tab, and I see that it uh, half opaque. Um, could you please describe why? Uh, uh, in 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 the areas where there is no walls, mm -hmm. but the ground it's uh, half transparent. Okay. Okay. For what reason? Uh, you, you mean you mean this area? Half yes. Transparent? Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, let me go back. Or just because, if there is no reason. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so your question, your question is how we, and um, how we implemented the intersection, right? And uh, because, uh, or I didn't get the question. No, my question is why it is half transparent because I didn't get it. Uh, is there a reason for that or? Uh, it just uh, you, you mean the character idea. or the background? No, I, I'm previous picture, the background, the yeah, this one, this one, this one. And when I open this picture in a browser, mm -hmm. uh, the areas where we see background are half transparent. You mean this one? Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's half transparent. Um, uh, so this is a normal PNG file. So I don't think it has transparency. So you, you open it from the um, GitHub, right? Uh, I open it in uh, JS Grand Amplified uh -huh. I found the most heaviest picture, 16 megabytes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a bigger one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And browser shows me a lot of squares like. Uh, of transparent PNG picture. Mm -hmm. That's why yeah. I asked. Uh, it's, a, it's a good question. Actually, I don't remember if it's transparent or not, because it's possibly maybe transparent. So for now, I, do, I just don't remember. So, but it's, it doesn't like change, it changes nothing because uh, this is the first picture we uh, put on the background. So all the objects in the game will be like, uh, after this picture so I'm if it's transparent or not it's it's not important at all so because uh before we just clear uh, the uh, canvas so it will be the first picture which we put on the canvas so it it like has no sense to be transparent okay. maybe it's a little bit transparent okay I, I, I got it i think there is no reason to have it yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. i, I so thought uh, there I, is a I reason i will check it so i will I... check it after the presentation it's interesting so uh because there is no sense to to create transparency here actually yeah um, thank you yeah no problem um yeah, regarding the walking. So let me explain how walking works. Uh, works. So let's imagine you just press the right button. So you you, you need just go right, right? Uh, so uh, here is a very simple formula which we use. So uh, what what is S? S is a sprite. So sprite means small image of Mary. It's our character. Uh, so when you go right, you just need to add some number to the x coordinate of our sprite. So this is it. So all this formula uh, is used to just move sprite right or left, depending on the uh, arrow you, you're pressing. So if you go want to go left, uh, you press the left button. If you go right, you press right button. So when you press left or right, this direction is changing. So right is a one left is a minus one step speed is a speed of walking so this is a value from the configuration so this is how you may change the speed of the main character and this part means that we use um, the difference between two frames so for example let's imagine we have a 60 fps on your computer right now so it means every frame will be drawn uh, in a period of 16 and 6 milliseconds so if you have like a bigger fps so this distance will be smaller so this one is just um, distance in milliseconds between two frames so this is it why do we need to do that because 
if you have like old style, old like computer with all the graphic card and you have only 30 uh, FPS on your machine, uh, we should slow down uh, the speed. So this thing, this part should be like in every formula which you use, for example, when you jump, when you walk, when you run and so on and so on. So it's very important to understand how fast your computer is. So it's like depends on the FPS uh, which you have uh, currently. Um, yeah, let's uh, explain the jumping. So here is a small uh, trajectory of the jumping. So let's imagine you're uh, pressing the jump button and you are pressing the right button. So in this case, the trajectory of your character would be like this. So this is a ascending phase. This is a descending phase. So if you are pressing just jump, so uh, the trajectory would be like this, up and down. So this is it. Um, yeah. So actually, it was a like I implemented this part four times because the first version was like bad. So I just remember it is the formulas from school uh, where maybe you remember this uh, like tasks uh, in school when you get the iron ball and just throw it up and we use these formulas uh, with velocity and gravity. And this is how the Y coordinate changes. So it works okay. So you may choose your velocity, you may choose your gravity, and t is a time. So um, it starts from zero when you're standing on the ground, and t just increasing. And in, at some moment, we just uh, uh, stop moving up and start to fall down. So it works okay. But the problem with this formula is that it's hard to do the control uh, control it jump and uh, it's hard to uh, hitting the sailing. What does it mean? Um, let me, um, yeah. So so control it jump. It's 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 an ability to jump higher or lower depending of how long you are pressing the jump button, and the hitting the sails mean. I think I have a. Yeah, so this is a hitting the sail. It means that when you're jumping and you have a wall above you, so you need to stop uh, at this point and start falling down. So these two, um, these two abilities is very hard to implement using this formula. So it doesn't work actually for jumping. So I just remove the old code. And I found a very interesting presentation about the Super Mario implementation. This is a screenshot from the YouTube. We have a link here. Um, yeah, and they explained how to implement in a very simple way uh, the jumping. So. Let, let me explain a little bit. So this part, the DT, the DT is the same. So this is a um, delay between two frames. So we uh, remember the time on the previous frame, get the time in the current frame, um, just see the difference and move them to the DT. And we change uh, Y and V, V is a velocity here. So Y changes by multiplying the DT on the current velocity and current velocity, we're also updating using, using gravity and dt. So using these two formulas, just perfectly, uh, just resolve our pro problem of jumping. So let me explain uh, what is control a jump. So let's imagine you don't want to jump like uh, uh, always in the same way. So for example, you have a small hole and you want to jump above this hole, yeah, right? So you don't need to do the like big jump. You want to have like small jump. So in this case, you just press, maybe let, let me explain on the, in a game. Yeah. Yep. Let's, oh my God, I have this menu. Let's start from the beginning. Yeah. 
So uh, for now, I'm, I'm pressing the jump button uh, only for a few milliseconds like this. So you may see the height, right? So let me press it like longer. So as you may see, I am jumping much higher. So this is a controller jump. So depending of the time of pressing the jump button, I can do like longer jump or lower jump. So this is an idea. Uh, okay, let's let's go back. So yeah, you may create your own trajectory and uh, this previous formula just uh, resolve this problem. So what do we need to add to this formula? So we, if we're pressing the jump uh, button, um, we have some limits. So let, let's imagine we are jumping for maximum one second, right? So we have half of the second for ascending, of half of the second for descending, for going down. So uh, the user may press maximum uh, 500 milliseconds. And after that, there is no sense uh, to press the jump button because this is the maximum you may jump. So the jump max time uh, means what I'm explaining to you. So if you are pressing the jump button uh, less than jump max time, it means we need to add some velocity increment to our current velocity. In this case, you will be uh, jumping higher and higher and higher until the some some maximum some jump max time. So this is how it works. W very easy, actually. After that, if it's less, uh, all all this like entire formula doesn't work and velocity will be the same. So you you just start to fall down after that. Um, the same for the heat in the ceiling. So for example, you are jumping and above you there is a wall. So all you need to do is just reset the velocity and jump start time. So this is it. You just need to set it to zero. And in this case, okay, let me, let me show it to you again. So in this case, um, yeah, let's, yeah, as you may see, I'm starting fall down right after hitting the, the wall. Okay. Yeah, so let's go further. So the coyote time, maybe I think <laughs> uh, you remember this, uh, this cartoon uh, with the coyote. So in, in this example, uh, he, he doesn't know that there is no um, like walls under his legs. And we have a very similar uh, situation in the game. So let's imagine we want to jump, but there is no ground under, under our feet. But uh, this techniques means that there is a, a period of time when we still may jump. So in, in this example, we still may jump because we have some delay in the formula. And for my game, I think it's 200 milliseconds, right? So in this case, you still may jump uh, and, and this calls coyote time because this is an analog from the cartoon about the coyote. Yeah, so we, we, we use such, such formula, the coyote delay milliseconds, it's, it's a delay. Uh, in my case, it's 200 milliseconds. And this formula just adds this ability to your game. We also have double jump, for example. Maybe you know about this when you may jump after jump. Uh, but I didn't implement this uh, in this current, in this game. So how about key handling? The key handling is very simple. We use, use standard window event, add event listener. So we listen every um, key press uh, on entire browser. And we have a list of handlers here. Handlers are just simple functions. And um, yeah, and if we press like uh, some key, a key from the handlers, handlers list, we just call uh, the special function. So in this example, we have some on go left, for example, if, if you press A button, it means we need to call this function. So it's very simple. So there is no like uh, uh, 
some unique ideas here. Also have configuration. Configuration is just a big object. So actually this is a small piece of configuration and I will cover this in, in the next slides. But in general, we have an ability to change every, everything in, in the game. So starting from the IDs, uh, fonts, uh, timers, and actually everything. So let, let me show what can we change. So first of all, we may change the size of the canvas, the height and width. We may change all the sounds, uh, sprite size. This is a small square uh, in a game. Uh, maybe you remember all our uh, like room um, is split into the small pieces. Oh, it's, it's like a puzzle. Um, we may change a level, enemies, uh, keys. We have a settings. Uh, we may change all these blocks or walls. We may change main character. We may change text we show to user. So it means that everything which I mentioned right now uh, is in configuration. We may change effects. We may change uh, sprites. For example, the stalactites. I will also cover this topic a little bit later. So here is an example of um, one room. So for example, uh, this is a part of configuration. So inside the rooms, we have enemies and items. For example, we actually have more like things in the rooms, but for example, uh, I, I cover only two things. So uh, this is the first room, the zero, and zero here also. And inside this room, we have one enemy and one item. So we have a heart, we may find it, and we have some bug, I think. Yeah, it's a bug. So what does it mean? It means that we also have a two constructor functions enemy and item. And all we need to do is just get this configuration and put into the constructor function. And this is how we may get the instance. So for example, if we get this configuration and put it uh, like a first parameter, we will have the instance of enemy and the same for item or for the hair. Uh, this is why we may change everything inside every room. So for example, we may add some additional enemies, we may add some um, effects or whatever we want actually. So if we are speaking about the client server application, you remember that our assets or resources, um, actually we may put them into the UI, it's okay. But in, in, in my cases, I put them uh, on, into the server and as uh, loading of these resources uh, may grab your time. So depending on, on speed of your network, it may, I don't know, it may be like two seconds or one minute, it depends, right? So the idea uh, behind the assets preload means that we need first a lot, everything we need. So for example, every images, every uh, sounds, MP3 files and so on. And only after that, we can start the game. So this is a piece of code which implements this idea. Um, you don't need to understand everything here. So the main idea here is that we support the MP3 and PNG files. Every time when we start the loading, we decrease uh, the counter. And every time when we complete the loading, we just decrease it. So there is a point uh, in future, then this count counter will be zero. And for us, it means that all the assets were like done and we may start the game. So the idea is very simple. Um, yeah. So uh, a few words about scripts. So scripts, scripts, it's a, it's a general term for um, different things on your screen. So for example, here it's a stalactite and lake and water drop. Uh, it's, it's here, I don't know, I, I think you, you see it. It's a very small. Uh, 
yeah, and plan is also a script. So actually, it it may be like everything what what you want, and uh, the script it's something on uh, which is on current um, room. So we also may put this uh, scripts configuration into the uh, global config, and this is how we add them to the room. So let's uh, let me explain. Uh, one script. So for example, this is a portal. It's also script. So what does it mean? We have a module which is called portal. So this is a constructor function with some parameters. So it returns simple object with one property sprite. Because this is very simple example of script. It means that we have like very simple animation of portal. It's just spinning around. Um, so inside, inside this uh, our data, we just call another um, constructor function, uh, which is called Sprite. And Sprite also return the object with some details about the Sprite. So it has like uh, internal implementation of changing the frames of the animation. You remember about uh, my example of animation. So the Sprite do all the things uh, related to the animation. So the portal just returns this object with the Sprite inside. And we have two functions, draw and update. So every time when we need to draw the sprite on the screen, we just call draw sprite. Draw sprite, just get the sprite and like put it on, on the canvas uh, using the draw image. And update function uh, do uh, two things. So first we have this if, uh, and it means that when the main character just touches the um, portal, uh, we just go to another room. So because it's portal, right? Otherwise, we just update the sprite. Actually, update the sprite, it just changes the current frame. So let's imagine we have 10 frames of of portal uh, in a when, when it's spinning. So we just get next frame and on the next call of draw, we just draw next frame and uh, it's, it's an illusion of spinning because we just changes the small images. So, yeah, this if works in a very simple way, the touch functions just uh, check if the rectangle of the main character and the rectangle of the sprite are intercepting, and this is it. So if it's true, then we just set the current room to six in this case, um, do some updates and show the text to the user. So you use teleport or something like that. Um, yeah. And what uh, effects? Yeah, effects is another idea. It means the difference between effects and scripts that scripts uh, lives on special rooms, but effects lives everywhere. So for example, there is two examples. So we have Firefly and we have a flashlight. So here is on the top right corner, we have a flashlight. So you may pick this flashlight, you, you need to find it. And if you turn it on, you may see that uh, in a very dark cave, um, uh, you don't see like here, 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 and here, but you see the uh, everything near the main character. So this is a standard flashlight actually. And I'm doing this uh, by changing the, uh, I don't remember transparency or oh, it's a brightness, yeah. So by changing the brightness of every dot, uh, in a, in a circle. So let me explain, uh, for example, how Firefly works. So Firefly, so you may imagine just simple bug, right? Or fly. And it's it's fly, let, let me show you by, by the way again. Um, I hope uh, you have a good frame rate on your side. So yeah, so here is a Firefly. You may see how they move. So this moving, uh, like I have had two versions of implementation of this because it's important to have like um, um, very realistic moving. So my first version was like random walk. If you don't know what is the random walk, um, let me explain. Um, yeah, so it, let's imagine we have in this point, we have a, a flashlight. 
and you may go to one of eight directions. So you may go uh, forward, it's a zero direction, a little bit right, it's a one direction, and so on. So you have eight directions. Uh, the random walk means that you randomly choose the direction and go in, in this direction. But in this case, the moving will be not, not realistic. So the real bugs um, like don't move in this way. So this is why I changed the algorithm. So I change it, it in this way. So when you are here, you may go on the left, on the forward, or on the right, but not to the direction of two or six or five or four. For example, let's imagine we are choosing the one. So in this case, after that, you may go on the zero direction, one forward and two on the right, and only on this three and so on. So in this case, the moving of the back will be like more natural. So for example, let's imagine you are wanting to go backward. So in this case, it would be like, see on my mouse, it would be like this, yeah, or this, yeah. So it's it's more natural, it looks very, very good. And this is an implementation of this algorithm. So uh, I don't want to explain the, all the details, but I think you got the idea. Uh, yeah, some uh, final statistics. So this is a size of the project. Uh, it's very small. So for you, I think it's important to know that we have only four modules where the amount of lines more than 100. So all other models here are really small. So this project is very simple. So um, we have 3,000 190 lines for now, maybe a little bit like more for now, but in general, this is it. Um, yeah, uh, it's almost the final slide. So pros and cons, yeah. It's easy to develop such game uh, because we have everything we need. So we have uh, objects uh, for working with images, uh, uh, audio, uh, it's still possible to develop such a game uh, in a small team. So for example, to create the core, I spent three weeks and uh, after that also maybe two months to just adding some features and uh, like fixing the bugs and so on. Otherwise, uh, the two-dimensional color canvas is slow. It's, it's not so fast as some, uh, for example, OpenGL or DirectX uh, when you're uh, using the C++ or C, C Sharp. So it's, it's much faster. And also the JavaScript is slow. Actually, if you have a modern computer and you're trying to create the platformer game, it's okay. But if you want to create something more bigger, more like realistic and uh, modern, so in this case, um, the FPS will be slow. We also don't have the infrastructure. So if you have like any experience in game dev, you remember about Unity. So it has like many editors inside, many tools, which uh, really helps you. And uh, there is no low level. So JavaScript is a high level uh, language. We actually have the web assembly, but it's a different story. It's complicated and you need to know like low level language uh, like Rust or C++ or C to develop uh, on the web assembly. Yeah, uh, this is a list of tools I used. The tiles, this is a editor for the level. Audacity is a MP3 and Wave editor for the sounds. Free sounds is just uh, assets, site with assets for sounds. Uh, open game art, each, each uh, these two are just services with a lot of different games and assets and uh, people who may test your games. The paint net I use just to uh, change the images, the animation of my game, VS Code, it's okay. The chat GPT and mid journey helped me to create some descriptions, some ideas, mid journey I used to generate the backgrounds and Netlify, you already, this is a service and I use the service to just upload the game to the internet and this is how you may play it. Yeah, this is the last slide guys. Um, 
you may go to the GitHub um, using the first uh, URL. Uh, this is an open source project. You may create your like version of this uh, game. It's okay. Uh, you may like create pull request. It's also okay. And you may play it using the second link uh, in the internet. So if you have a questions, it's the right moment to answer, uh, not answer, but ask them. I have two questions, mm -hmm. which is single, uh, actually single one. How many time uh, did you spend on uh, game, on development of this game? And how many time you spent on this presentation? <laughs> uh, Okay, so again, the core features of this game were developed in three weeks. As, so it's, it's not hard because the only thing you need to, to know is how to write the JavaScript code. So this is it. But also if, you, if we are speaking about the modern game, about the, some interesting mechanics, about the great idea and so on and so on, uh, you will spend more time. So for example, for me, I spent also two months after that to create all the features, draw all the items, uh, create all the animations because you need to be like, uh, uh, you need to have an ability to draw things. So it was hard to me uh, uh, at the beginning. Uh, most of the uh, pictures which I show it to you were grabbed from the internet. Few of them were created from scratch and few of them were, uh, I had a friend, uh, I have a friend and she drew few images for me. And we also spent some time with a microphone to create all the sounds, uh, all the, uh, yeah, I found the music and so on, so on. So actually this is a normal big project. So if you want to create very, very cool game, you need some kind of team. So it depends. Yeah, for me, it was three months plus, or oh, not three weeks plus two months. Okay, it's, it's something like three months for what I'm showing to you. You, you may well, try, you. by, by how, the way, uh, play, play. How about game. presentation? Because uh, I don't think uh, you're doing presentation during uh, game development. Um, actually, I was. <laughs> yeah, so the, because... the game was a, a topic to show something for the community. Um, no, no, it was like uh, the idea. So when I was very young at school, I had an idea to create the game. It was very, 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 very long time ago. I think it was, oh my God. Okay, very, very <laughs> a long time ago. So I started from the basic. It, it wasn't Visual Basic, it was Quick Basic, as I remember. I tried to create my first game, but it was failed actually. But for now I, I understood that I have an ability to create something because I know how to write the code. Yeah, so it was closing of, of my child Genstadt, <laughs> or Gestalt, how it's, how it's called. <laughs> Dreams yeah. comes true, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, any other questions? Uh, I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, the limits of, of JavaScript and, and Canvas. Yeah. Uh, did you bump into those limits on this project? Or Yeah. Like... No. Yeah. So I, I can show it to you, actually. So... Um, uh, for example, every time when you need to, um, so let, let's imagine, let me go a little bit further. Let me close this. Um, we have effects here. So effects, for example, when we go deep into the, um, into the cave, um, I decrease the level of light. So you may see that as deep I am, as darker, so you may see that uh, we have a, some kind of darker and darker environment. Yeah. And when you get the flashlight um, and turn it on, you're starting to do this effects of lighting. 
And it means that you need to go through the pixels and a lot of pixels and set pixel by pixel some values. So I have a two dimensional loop where I set new values on every frame. So in this case, the FPS just uh, slow down. So for example, if I have 60 FPS on my computer right now, um, in case of adding these effects, yeah, the FPS will, will drop, I think, into 40. So it depends uh, on your machine, on your CPU, actually, and your graphic cards. So yeah, this is where I like feel, felt the, um, the slowness of my computer and JavaScript. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I noticed the, the firebox uh, are like jumping. Is this my internet or? No, yeah, this I, is I, because I, of screen sharing. Yeah, this is because of screen sharing. Actually, oh, guys, see. if you want, I can share with you the gameplay um, video on YouTube. You you will see. Actually, you may go to the link uh, which we provided and just try on your computer. So you may go on this link. Let, let me put it maybe um, in the chat, right? And this is how, okay, let me, where is the chat? Chat is here. So, yeah, and uh, also we will share this information after presentation. Yeah, yeah. So we have a link on GitHub in the chat and we have a link on, in the game. So you need just to click on it and display web page background, for instance, how we can cover. I, I see the question in the chat. Can we clear canvas to be transparent? Ah, I think this is the first one, right? Um, uh, yeah, we, we can we can set every pixel in the canvas um, as a transparent because we have a we have access to every pixel in the canvas. So the last byte of four, so every pixel is a four byte. First three is a red, green, blue. So you may change the value, and the last one it's a transparency, um, and you may change from zero to two hundred and fifty-five. So this is how you may create transparency. And yeah, I don't know what is parabola. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's about jumping. I just mentioned it, this word when you're talking about jumping formula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a it's a parabola. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Guys, any other questions or so, we just? Uh, I, I have one more question. The, okay. The collision map that you that you show. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. How did you create that? Like, did the, are there any tools, or did you create it by hand? Like, how? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mentioned about the tilet. Uh, the tilet is an editor. So let me show it again. Uh, yeah, here is here is a tilet. So the tilet is an open source editor. You may use it to create your levels. Uh, so as as I said, this is like very simple Photoshop. And uh, all you have here, so this is a big image. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this tiles, uh, tiled uh, application, it produces the image itself. And also we may export uh, the intersection array. So it will be just JSON. And so I have the special converter in my game. So if you go to the... Um, GitHub, let me show it to you. So I have a special converter for this. So when you go to source HTML, it's called to bin, to binary. So you just need to get this JSON, which is exported from the tile. So here it is. And I have a small code, which is just convert this array into the big int uh, array. So this is it. So this is how I get uh, the one dimensional array of begins. And I use only bits of this array to check the intersection. We have actually a special, um, special fire file for this. I don't remember, it should call blocks or something like that. Yeah, like this. Yeah, and we have all these functions, right block, left block, and so on. So you may you may see how it implemented. Yeah. 
question. Uh, have you considered using CSS for your flashlight uh, effect? A little bit, a little bit. I have a, uh, I have a mushroom in a game. So this is a, I don't know how it's in English. Hallucinogenny, how it's how it's called. <laughs> when you have a hallucination. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you get this mushroom, you will see. Okay, guys, let me show you. Yes. <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah, so when you get, uh, yeah, here it is. Oh my God, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in this case, we use the CSS. So this is an example, as you may see, let's see on the colors. You see that we change the colors using some formula and uh, I I do it using the CSS. Yeah. By the way, this is a amount of, uh, oh my God. So it's impossible to breathe under the water. Yeah, so here I use the CSS, yeah. Super cool. <laughs> Any other questions, guys?